Hello, it's Monday, May 7th, 2007. This is Brian Shannon speaking from Alpha Trends Blogspot. The market has closed, and there was a very quiet session today. If you look at the queues on the screen right now, the NASDAQ 100, it closed at 46.63, and that's where it closed on Friday as well. So the market was un unchanged. Uh, while the market was unchanged, there were obviously a lot of good opportunities out there, long or short. Um, we'll take a look at stocks after, but looking at the NASDAQ 100, um, the level to focus on here has been, uh, I've said, $46.40 as far as the potential best area of short-term support. And that's what it's looking like. It continues to be the most important area. We do still have a rising five-day moving average. Just to kind of uh, make clear what my overall uh, feeling about this market is, number one, we're in an uptrend. That's the most important thing to recognize. So when I talk cautiously, it just means be defensive. Be ready to lock in profits. Don't necessarily look to sell short. There was a little bit of confusion because I talked about the QID on Friday. I wasn't recommending the QID. What I was recommending was if there's aggressive traders out there who are looking for some type of vehicle to go to if the market starts declining, that that is probably a good vehicle to go towards because it will appreciate twice as fast as the uh, NASDAQ 100 declines. But there's no evidence at all that the market is ready to decline here. We've got a fantastic uptrend on this daily time frame. We'd seen resistance tested last week. It acted as support. We also see that this 10-day moving average has been acting as support on three separate occasions so far. What I think is that we're uh, due for some kind of little bit further consolidation, but there's zero evidence of that so far. The market holds above important levels of support and continues to act good. Today's volume was very, very light. And it uh, makes me wonder if this was just, you know, this quietness reminds you the, of the phrase, uh, never sell short a dull market. And is this just the next little period of quiet consolidation that sucks the short sellers in and sets them up for another punch in the face? We'll see. We'll find out in the next couple of days. I don't want to make predictions. I only want to say, here's what we should do based on what the market action tells us. And that is, if the market breaks below 46.40, I think it pays to be a little bit more defensive in here that we'd most likely be heading down towards that $46 level. Uh, but again, zero evidence of that right now. The uh, S&P 500 closed with a gain of two cents. And again, very, very quiet session in here. It gapped up a little bit early on. Let's take a look at the two minute time frame. You can see it gapped up a little bit and then just traded within a range of, this is about uh, 85 cents up to a high of, uh, it's only about 25, 45 cent range or I guess my math's not too good, but 35 cent range in the spiders today. Very, very quiet. If you're an S&P trader, uh, I probably ended up getting chopped up in here today because the market basically did nothing all day uh, as far as the S&P 500 goes. But on the daily time frame, obviously it continues to hold in a very nice uptrend. And that's what is important here. We want to continue to give the benefit of the doubt to the buyers but always be on the uh, uh, possible lookout for evidence that the market's breaking down and be quick, quick to react. The um, semiconductors, uh, these guys broke out, as we know, a couple weeks ago and pulled back to that rising 10-day moving average. It's acting, it continues to act good. A, a higher high comes in at about 37.75. And uh, we're running into a little bit of resistance in here right now. Short term, I think the best level of support it's probably down about $37.15 for the semiconductors. The IWM, that is the Russell 2000, um, this, these guys finished with a $0.32 cent loss, but there's nothing in, the, in here on, even on the short term that's indicating any type of reason for concern. The level of resistance that uh, continues to uh, be obvious here is this $83 level, and you could maybe make a case that this is a big head and shoulders pattern. If you were perverted, you might think of something else, but uh, I won't go there. Um, this daily time frame, though, again, we've got the $83 level getting past that. I think uh, I mentioned on Friday that uh, it, it looked like probably getting above that level would probably lead to a move up towards $84 um, on the IWM. Let's take a look at the stocks the, that, we had meant, that I had mentioned over the weekend. First of all, um, CMGI, CMGI, just looking at my notes here, and uh, CMGI, what's going on? Here we go. Uh, we wanted to buy this stock above 225. That occurred early on, and our stop was at 220. I think you can raise your stop to, let's call it 222 in CMGI. Um, 
222. Ionatron, IOTN. This stock I'd wanted to uh, purchase above $6 a share. Uh, I don't know what's going on with my chart here, but uh, the stock did not trade above that level, so there's no reason to uh, get involved in Ionatron. QSFT wanted to buy that stock above $16.98. Let's just say that we're in at $17 a share, and I would say raise your stop to $16.92 right now. RVBD, this is Riverbed. This is the one with the big earnings and the big short position. Unfortunately, in here, I had suggested uh, buying it above $32.60. But when it opens at 32.80, I always say don't chase those gaps. Wait for the pullback, see what happens, then see if the buyers take back control. Realistically, probably around here is where they took back control. Um, I'm in this one with some options, so I'm not really too worried about that. But officially, I'm going to say we didn't take a trade. It did come up and hit that target of $34 a share. Um, so officially, we didn't get involved. But I'd say continue to keep your eyes on this stock because it does continue to act good. MOGN, I said... Maybe below 22 bucks a share would make a good short sale candidate. And NTES, I thought below uh, 1780, I think, would be a good short sale candidate. But uh, again, this is not a good environment for short selling. So I'm not going to continue to update those two either.